So this video is about testing my HD with my signal stick antenna. Now, just to be sure, I'm not going to go over every single test that I'm doing with my signal stick and my HDs. Uh, this is more about the techniques that I use to get consistent and repeatable testing done. And uh, I would like to learn the techniques and tips that you use uh, in the comments below. Uh, maybe that'll help me out, improve my testing. Now, uh, that's the reason really that I bought this Baofeng GT5R to do testing between two, the two HTs that I have. Now, uh, this is a GT5R, not, similar to a UV5R, and I'll go into more detail over that uh, towards the end of the video. And I'll also do a little bit of a compare and contrast between my Alenco and my GT5R. Now, uh, you don't need a Baofeng to do your testing or you don't really need a second radio to do your testing. You could always get hold of a friend and do some QSOs and do a quick test like that. Or if you have a repeater nearby which, which has echo link, you could use the feature for recording an echo link to see how you sound when you're on the repeater. And you could change your accessories and keep recording and do a little compare and contrast like that. So, uh, but uh, if you don't, a second HT is pretty handy. So for this test, I'll be using the Alenco along with my mag mount and comet antenna here as my base station. And I'll compare the Baofeng for now with the rubber ducky and then the signal stick and see how it goes. So that's just a demo that I plan to do. Uh, I won't go into too much detail as to uh, every test that I do, but I will should go over the techniques that I use. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the Alenco will act as my receiver it is set up on simplex frequencies, 14747 here and 44545 on UHF. Note that these are both simplex frequencies per the ARRL band plans. The Alenco is connected to a Comet antenna externally. It'll stay right here and be receiving as I transmit from various places. So of course, I won't be home while this Alenco is receiving my test transmissions from various places using various accessories. So for that, I need a recording device and I plan to use my smartphone, one of my smartphones here. Uh, this is the Skipping Silence Recorder app that I downloaded. It's free. It's pretty easy to use. I got all the default settings in there and that seems to work for me in the tests I've done so far. So I plan to keep my smartphone right here in recording mode right next to the Alenco and I'll make sure nobody moves it while I'm out. So here I am in my backyard. I have my Baofeng set up to the exact same frequencies as my base station. The first thing I want to do is get a baseline. And what do I mean by baseline? Uh, let me do some tests, the first couple of tests, and then I'll explain what I mean by setting up a baseline. Machine test from the backyard, machine test on VHF using the Baofeng stock antenna on low power, machine test no response needed machine test on VHF. Machine test from the backyard, machine test on VHF using the Baofeng stock antenna on low power. Machine test, no response needed machine test on VHF. So you saw from the first test that it was very clear. The sound was very clear. So I don't think now is a good time for me to switch out this stock antenna and go to the signal stick and try it out because I expect to see an improvement. So to set up a baseline, I really need to move further away from the house where I might get a lower sound quality and then see if the signal stick makes it better. Uh, I could do different things. I could play with the squelch on my base station and see uh, if that makes a difference. Uh, but I really wanna try and uh, do the range testing and maybe do the squelch testing some other day. So. Let me find another spot from where I can transmit and get a slightly degraded reception and then do the testing over there. And that will be my baseline. So I've moved further away from the house. I'm still inside the neighborhood, uh, but I don't need to be too far away since I'm using low power. So let me try and do a test from here and see if this spot can be a good baseline. So let's try it out. So I did do a test and let me now show you the audio I recorded. So that's the degradation I was looking for. 
So that's pretty cool. So this is a good spot for a test. I can do one transmission using the stock antenna and then switch over to my signal stick, do another transmission and compare the two. Um, hopefully the signal stick makes things better. If it makes it worse, we'll know. Uh, now I won't go through the exact details of the test on the video, but I, will, I do want to say a few things that I do when uh, doing the test. Uh, one of them is, all of them are to do with consistency. Uh, one of them is to hold the mic at the exact same spot for both antennas. I usually touch it to my chin, so I'm 100% sure it's at the same spot. I try to speak in the same uh, voice, same tone. Uh, the other is to hold your HD the same way, in the same orientation. Don't hold it this way for one and this way for another. Uh, keep your hand also positioned pretty much the same way. Keep your body positioned too in the same way. Don't be turned around this way for one and that, that's not a good comparison. I also try to do both tests within the same few minutes as opposed to doing one uh, in the morning and then coming back a few hours later to do, this, do the next one. Uh, you got to really do them uh, close to each other because of uh, you know atmospheric conditions and all that. So that's those are the basic points that I use to do a good compare and contrast and uh, hope that helps you do your testing. Uh, let's go take a look at what the results are. So here are my test results tabulated. I'm surprised that the signal stick did not do as well as I expected, especially in UHF and in low power. But on VHF high power, where I'll be transmitting the most and the VHF receive, it did well, so it's definitely a keeper. Uh, I do need to do more testing there. And if I find something different, I will be sure to update the description below. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, also, I did a test with the Alinko rubber duck. I thought that uh, that will be an improvement over the Baofeng rubber duck, but on low power, not so. I need to do more testing there as well for high power. And uh, the same, I will update it, update the description. Now, a quick note that these testing techniques that I went over in this video, we could use that for anything. You could use that for testing the mic gain on your HT. Uh, so uh, it's the same techniques, uh, the same principles, uh, just a different setting instead of changing an antenna. Another thing that helps the transmit from my HTs is perching it on top of my car. It's a metal roof and any metal plate should help in that case. I use this uh, cardboard box right here to stabilize the HT when I put it on top of the car. Uh, just make sure it doesn't tip over like this. And of course I have to use my headset so I'm away from the HT itself, either inside the car through the sunroof or I'm standing beside the car, always parked, of course, not moving. A few words about the GT5R as compared to a UE5R. This is supposed to be a better version of the UV5R. It restricts transmission to the ham bands only and also eliminates, supposedly eliminates spurious emissions and all that. Has also claimed some uh, FCC certifications and I'm not too sure about that. Uh, if you really want an in-depth deep dive review, I recommend you go off to Dave Kassler's channel. And I'll put a link to Dave Kassler's video there. He's done a really good job of uh, going through the details of this GT5R versus the UV5R. And if you don't mind losing the privileges of broadcasting outside of amateur bands, uh, this is only 25 bucks. So uh, same price as the UV5R. So I don't see why you shouldn't buy this. And you also get this uh, headset free with it. Uh, no programming cable here to buy that extra. Right, time to do a compare and contrast between my two HTs, the Baofeng and the Alenco. Now, mind you, the Alenco is a DMR radio, so it's heftier, and I won't go into the digital features. Uh, right off the bat, let's turn it on. The boot time, it takes a while to come up. Whereas this, it's instant on. Just comes right on. This is still booting up. All right, it's on now. Next point I would like to tell you is the volume indicator. As you change the volume, you see how far high or how low it is. Over here, if you got an incoming transmission, yeah, you know how high it is. But if you're on a different channel, you don't get it. But the workaround is press a button here and that tells you the volume. I set it back to low. Next feature I would like to point out is the TX Prohibit. 
This one has a TX prohibit that you can set up from the keypad here. It's on a per channel basis. And that's very useful when you want to prevent transmissions, uh, accidental transmissions. You can do a TX prohibit on this as well, but you will need the programming cable and a computer. In general, most features on this need a computer, not all features, but many features. Uh, so for example, setting up the channels with channel names, you'll need a computer for that. Whereas you can do all that right from the keyboard here. This has something called a WX alert, a weather alert. You can set it up like a weather radio. Set it up with a local uh, national weather service frequency. And when they issue a tornado warning or something like that, this will wake you up. This can listen to the weather channel. Actually, I am tuned into a weather channel right there. But it will not wake you up. It will not alert you when the weather service issues an alert. The other point is to do with the belt clip. Let's take a look at the belt clip. You take the battery off on this, the belt clip comes off with it. And I don't like that because if I'm switching batteries, I'll have to switch this belt clip out. I'll go without a belt clip on my other battery. Whereas with this one, I like that design here. The battery is independent of the belt clip. The belt clip stays with the radio like it should. So I can have extra batteries and keep switching around. So that's it for this uh, short video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, I would really appreciate a like and a subscribe. See you next time.